Victor, what are you doing in town? A uh, better question is what I don't do. What don't you do? Um, I don't do what my missus tells me. Oh, mate. <laughs> fucking, fucking true rebel, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what is she dead? Uh, no, look, um, to start from the top, I'll say, okay, I'm a councillor in the Berkshire, yeah. president of the Burke Bowling Club, I'm the president of the RSL sub branch, yeah. legacy for, uh, for legacy. Yeah. I do meals on wheels, volunteer driving. My mum's third generation Scottish. My dad's uh, back home <laughs> from uh, Dubbo, uh, Widgeon Radio tribe. You've fucking got it all signed up every angle. I, I'm what they call, what's the word I can't say? You're, you, mate, you, you, you pull the strings from behind the scenes. Well, you? this is true too. Like, sometimes, you know, you see this bloke, his head nodding. Yeah. Well, well, I'm behind him. You've got, you, you've got your hand firmly up his ass, yeah. hey? Well, a, a bit higher. I used to use ten fingers instead of one. So you're a backyard proctologist. Oh, mate, am, you know, am I what? As I said, like, you know. Back before you needed qualifications, hey? Back before they even invented Vaseline. Thanks for looking after Gary over there because we don't want Gary to go disappearing because he's going to be the next Prime Minister but we don't want him to do the Harry Holt on us. I'll tell you what, I can't wait for him to be the next Prime Minister. You've got to look at it at all angles, OK? Mm. But whilst we're way out here in the, in the bush, no one's going to really do things like we want to because according to the politicians, there's nothing this side of the Blue Mountains. You know, all the people that live on the eastern seaboard. Yeah. Okay. So there's nothing in here. Yeah. But they've, for, they've forgotten that for many, many years Australia rode on the back of the, of the sheep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Burke now alone. The, goat. the world is kind of leaderless in a sense at the moment, isn't there? There is a sense of, you know, Australia, you know, riding on the sheep's back. Even during the 80s, there's a sense of we're going into this world. But in the year 2015, there's a sense of uh, we're kind of just grinding towards something which isn't real good. And we've got a momentum taking us there. We don't know how to... We need a leader to just turn the ship around. We do, and I think Gary's Gary is a born leader. Well, you can tell that. There is no politician yeah. who wants to be known in a hundred years' time that they created the water for inland Australia. That's the problem. Yeah, but there's no one, no one who wants. But to, the problem, to Philip, is I don't think the politicians can do anything. I think by the time you get to the top, you're so used to just sucking everyone, yeah. you're sucking everyone's cock. It got you there, right? They're sucking everyone dry. They're yeah, and and these one, energy mate. companies and food production no. companies, they do not want people to be self-sufficient. They want the whole market to be sewn up. If this was Indonesia or China or Japan, yeah, yeah. there would be water running down that river twofold. You're dead right. We... You know, all they'd need to do is a couple of these greenies cut a couple of fingers off, you know, and yeah. the rest of them will pull themselves into line. Yeah. They've only got to do a couple, Yeah, you know, or maybe an arm or a leg. But anyway, they'll all the be The big right. thing we about... Would, we would have, you know... The big thing about the complaint about the greenies from the country, and just people need to know this, they go... The thing is, all the greenies are living in a concrete jungle, living off all the benefits of all these resources and going, oh, don't cut down a tree. And you just go, well, mate, why don't you... These people are living closer to nature than you are and you're telling them not to live it, so... When they go to all these process things, wrapping them up around trees, the, the chains that they wrap them around has been made, you know, there's fuel to burn to do all that. You know, they jump on the plane or the car to get there. They don't walk. Yeah, so they get all they the... Live, they, they get all the benefits... Tree of all these resources being used and then they turn around and go we don't want you to use them even though the end product is our lifestyle exactly take it all away from them go and live yeah. under the tree and see how they last for a month yeah, yeah. we'd have water in a month as me mate jimmy would say they're all too scared to have a crack well what do you reckon this guys having a crack this country has turned from a have a go country into a don't have a go otherwise you're going to get your ass kicked country and oh. we've got to turn that around yeah, exactly. We've got to have a crack, mate. Yeah. Even if you fail, you've had a go. But if you fail not having a go, you may as well not no, come out of your mum's pussy. Why do I wonder? Wondering is, is, is almost illegal now. Don't even wonder. Don't even think about that. Exactly. The biggest thing is when people say it can't be done. That's when you... Well, that's it. We love proving them wrong. We've been motivated by money for so long in history when really money is free, right? The, the Reserve Bank's created out of thin air. It's, a, it's an airy-fairy concept. It's, there's no material value in what money is, right? So I reckon we should be guided by what do we want to do with this country, not by how much money we've got. It's like, what's our vision for this country? And there's, there's nothing, is there? See, this is typical. Everyone says, don't come to Burke. What did Gary, Gary the Goat do? Gary the Goat goated up, yeah. and he come to Burke. He was going to only stay an hour. He's been here three days. Yeah. He loves Burke. And you know, Gary has gone out of the boundary of yeah. don't come to Burke. He's and been here three days, and he survived. And he hasn't got eaten. And we came in the back way. A very 
famous, uh, well-known Australian poet, Henry Austin. Yep. He once quoted, you haven't seen Australia unless you've been to Burke. And Gary has seen Australia. He's been four times around and Australia. And as far and as... He's, and he's just come to Burke, so now he's seen Australia. He's, and he's, as far as a promoter of Burke, that was probably right up there. No one's really topped Henry Lawson for that. But I think Gary the Goat can follow on in Henry Lawson's footsteps and promote Burke and Outback Australia and Lord what we said before, watering inland, inland Australia. Australia. That's he what it's could, all he about. He will be the next Prime Minister. He will do that. And that's what it's Gary's Prime Minister about. If you could get it down to one sentence, it is watering inland Australia. Did Gary meet all his, his, his like, long-lost cousins on the way from Cunnamulla down here? Mate. There was a lot of barren gun there just Mate. when you come across the border. Mate, like you'd know, sometimes you can't catch up with all your cousins. Well, this is true too. Uh, is there much local food grown here, eaten here, or is it all sort of Not ship- Not a... The, the way it is, you know, it comes and goes. We, we've lost a lot of our industries, you know, we need a sustainable industry. But even the good, in the good times, the food gets shipped away and then comes back, hey? It's not like... Well, it, it, with, with the meat, like, we'd grow, we'd have the cattle and sheep. Yeah, in, yeah. But they'd be put on transport to take it away to oh. either Dubbo or uh, yeah. Molong or, or uh, even Mudgee or somewhere. Oh. Get slaughtered. And then, and then it comes back here. Get, which is, you know, really stupid. Because years and years ago, we had our own networks here. Yeah. And employed, what, 300 people? Average 300. Yeah. And, and, and the meat slaughtered here would be eaten here, wouldn't it, yeah, without yeah, being transported you, somewhere yeah. else? Be, be, because uh, the meat that was slaughtered here then. But, Victor, but, how can how can these um, fuel companies survive with that type of attitude? I mean, if we just don't start using their fuel to ship everything around millions of times, they're going to go out of business, mate. Well, it's their problem. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it costs us an arm and a leg now for fuel up here. But, you know, the, the crux of it for me, like, the country is dying in Australia, isn't it, population-wise and Inland. everything, right? Inland yeah, Australia. No, totally. well, there, there's no but, you, mate. But, but the there. crux of it to me is when food stops being grown and eaten in the town. Once that stops, that, that, because they're all labour-intensive things, once that stops... And it gets replaced by the fuel companies who go, no, we'll take that over and ship it everywhere. Towns die. Unless we, do you reckon that can be reversed? Do you reckon people will go back to growing their own veggies, slaughtering their own meat, or are there too many rules to prevent that? See, the problem with us in this area in particular, uh, we're on the what, what, Murray-Darling Basin, but we've got no water. Now, water is, yeah. you know, it's everything. But with the technology that the world's got, and Australia's got it too, all that water that goes out the Ord River yep. back out to the ocean uh, can, in my opinion, in, in the opinion of a lot of you know people who know things, can be brought back down this way. Now, if they could in build the a railway line, line from Adelaide to Darwin back a hundred, you know, you know, if, you know, if they could do that now. Well, if C.Y. O'Connor in 1890 can build a, a pipeline from. Perth to Kalgoorlie, mm. surely now in the year 2015 we can pump re, re, we can t- pump water inland, but we can't do it. Why? Why is it? Well, I, I, I personally think is that the politicians don't want to do it. They put it in a too hard basket and say, oh, you can't do this. But as I just said, you know, if they can do that railway line, well, you've got the in- infrastructure there to carry all the pipelines up there. Yeah. And all we're going to do is bring it back over into Queensland, yeah. let it out there, it'll go down in the Diamond Tina and yeah. to, to a lot of the uh, places out there where, where they eventually run into our water system. Or even like if you But do you know why they can't do that? Because if they set that up, it's a free resource. It's, it's free water pouring in. They've got to do it so that oh, you pay for it. I mean, what about power here? Do you reckon... You know, they say solar energy cannot be transported easy, but you get a fair bit of sun out here. Do you reckon this could be run off its own power, Burke, or is that I unrealistic? I can't see why. It can't be because they've just done it at Ningen. Yep. They've got the biggest uh, solar energy plant in the Southern Hemisphere down there. Really? Yeah. And it powers the whole town? Well, it powers the town and powers, uh, what's it, was it 36,000? 36,000 houses or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something massive. like 36,000 houses that it can supply. And who, who supplies that? I think it was a private company uh, in conjunction with uh, the government. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, like, as you say, like, you know, this country is, is a sunny country. Yeah. You can do anything out here if you've got the people that want to do it. Well, do you know the thing is, when Gary's Prime Minister, right, because we're running for PM, right, 
two of the key things we're going to say is decentralise any energy production so that it's locally in each town. So you're off the grid. You can you 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 supply your own energy, right? And also decentralise food production so that you. You get your own meat and your own veggies within the town without all this outsourcing and stuff like that. And that will get more people in there, more chicks, more kids. Because the country towns, that's what the culture is based on, isn't it? Like, it's, it's gone from agriculture to agribusness, where it's just blokes out here pulling themselves off because they're a contractor on a farm. Phil, you introduced me to Bob from Burke. And Bob was the local policeman here for 40 years. So yeah. We got rid of Bob. Yeah. And we got the girls in. Yeah, yeah. So who would you rather be locked up with him or the girls? What was your name? My name's Hannah. Oh, Hannah yeah, got a. Hannah's the local police. <laughs> really? Yeah, You're yeah, the local yeah, cobber, yeah. hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No wonder there's so many breaking in, is here. It's just about you, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, some might. There's <laughs> some you might want to get handcuffed, but some you chew your arm off if you've got your hand. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, it's worth going through those to get to the good ones, you know what I mean? I don't know. But Bob, you know, we're just talking about like, you know, pretty well the death of country towns. You know, you've seen it all around Australia, right? You know, it's, it's the forgotten inland Australia, right? We're going to run Gary for Prime Minister, right? And it's going to be on the ticket of watering inland Australia, creating a food bowl for the world, right? Now, one of the main things we think the country is dying is we're missing out on opportunities here and we're going to decentralise food production so that food production goes back into the country, right? And one of the big things in the country is meat, right? All it is lamb and cattle now and it's butchered here, sent to Adelaide and then sent back to the same place. So all the fossil fuel industries cash in on all the transport really. But really, our three biggest meats in Australia are basically goats, kangaroos, and rabbits, and they're all good meat. They're all good, healthy meat. Now, the problem is with those animals is they're hard to fence in. And if you can't fence them in, you can't own them. And particularly in our Western idea of thinking, if you can't own something, you don't value it. It's vermin. So we're shooting vermin. When really, if we go back to harvesting all that meat, butchering it, lo butchering it locally and eating it locally, and then also growing our own food locally, which doesn't have to be transported everywhere, that creates a sundowner culture where people, that's the welfare. So people come out here, you go, you can camp for free and you can eat for free. And then beyond that, you can work if you want, right? And then create agriculture in the country rather than what's been taken over, agribusiness. Now, what, what are your views on that? Do you reckon that'll, that'll fly in your view? No. <laughs> How come? <laughs> We need to get water down the river, Bob, don't we? Yeah, yeah. we need to get water for a yeah. start. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's the key to it. It's the watering and, and then... The people in the city, yeah. they're not going to come in here to eat. Most of the people in the city they don't even know what Burke is. The Broken Hill's out there somewhere. Yeah. Some probably think that Bathurst is somewhere you would probably never Bob, Bob, go I to. know you guys feel forgotten. I know that, but I'm, I'm just talking but about... It's, a, a, it's not forgotten... They don't even know. Yeah, but I'm, talk even I'm talking about you've got to do something which captures people's imagination. And rather than the city, country people going, oh, you're forgetting us, why don't country people own it? And they go, how about we water it? How about we slaughter our own meat here and grow our own food here and create a culture where people start going, you know what, I'm in the cities, I'm a bit drug fucked, I've lost directions, I'm going to go out to the country and have a go. And there's employment, there's a culture out here, there's chicks to root, and there's fun. Yeah, but the doll's just too high. No, we're not. No, we're fucking off the doll. Oh, 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 yeah, Bob, no, hear me, no, man. No, hear me, no, man. Going, hear me, man. We're talking about watering Australia, right? It's going in the infrastructure. Creating our own localised food, and that's what's killed the country. It's yeah. disconnecting country people from their own food source. Now, once you disconnect people from their food source. Obviously, the city people are disconnected from it, right? They don't know where it all comes from. Yeah. But the essential thing in the country now is farmers are not self-sufficient on their own food. So back even in the Depression days, you can go, oh, I'm dirt poor, but I can raise 14 kids because I'm self-sufficient. Whereas now we go, you know what, I I I'm loaded, I've got all this welfare, social security, but I can't raise fucking two kids because it's too expensive. So the country dies, there's not children, there's not chicks out here. So it's all about watering out here so that people have got access to their own food source. You sound like a greenie. No, we're going to cut the fingers off the greenie. No, it sounds like a greenie.
Yeah, tell me how why that sounds like a greenie. Well, of course, they're not realistic. Well, tell me why that's not realistic. Well, they're not saying, but I'm going to. No, it. fuck, no, no. No, 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 no. Bob, no, this is no. important. This is an important thing. But, I've just said get people back to growing their own food, right? Yeah. And you've said well, that's not realistic. How come? Well, probably if you got rid of the doll, it would be, because they'd have Yeah, to. but I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. We're, we're getting rid of the doll, right? We're getting rid of all welfare, right? Yeah, well, that won't, won't bloody happen. Tell me why that is not realistic in you, because well, what I gather is there's a lot of people like you complaining about, oh, we've forgotten everything, but when you know, a solution like that where you go, grow out and grow your own food, and you go, that's unrealistic, how way. come? I'd rather vote for Gary than Bill Shorten or that... Yeah, but fucking, yeah, issues. but move on from that. Move on to the real issues rather than complaining about the politicians. Yeah, Tell me why you think that is a greeny issue growing your own food. Relaxing all, nah, nah, all the rules. I don't say it's a greeny issue growing your own food. What's, what, was, uh, what, what part of what I said was a greeny issue? Well, see, most people now yeah. can't even start a bloody lawnmower. I fucking know that. Yeah, I fucking they, know they, that, they Bob, but I'm talking about... I'm not. Go and do a course. Bob, Bob, you're complaining about everything. Get with the program here. I am saying... War, I'm not talking about whinging here. I'm talking about something proactive for the future, something inspiring for the country. Get water into the country. Yeah. Relax all the butchering laws, the growing your own food laws. Don't get sucked into a subsidised food industry which cashes in on transport costs, right? You localise it so that everyone's got... The dole is access to free food because there's an abundance of it because it's farmers growing their own food. Why... Is, do you see that as not the direction to go to, a green oh, I, issue? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I'd love to see it happen. Great. So you're not, you're not against it being a greeny idea? No, I was just saying about greens. I oh, know you don't like greens. I'm not talking about yeah, whinging I'm here. I'm saying because they're unrealistic. That's what I mean. Yeah, but you're complaining about something I'm not even talking about. No. Like, fucking get over that, right? No. We're talking about just watering inland Australia, yeah. relaxing all the butchering laws and all the, all the red and green tape about growing your own food because you've got to go through safety issues and just get locally grown food. You can't even have the milk straight out of the cow. That's it. Uh, That's it. How stupid. We're going to relax that, right? Yep. So we're going to give people back their own connection to their own self-sufficiency and their own destiny and their and 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 enliven an australian culture and that's what we're going to do now there is a backlash about you've tapped onto something where people in the country think oh it sounds like a greenie thing people in the country hate greenies because they stop stuff i'm not talking about stopping stuff i'm talking about encouraging it yeah well i'll vote for you i mean i'll vote for you we are just fucking swung uh we're fucking swung bob around took a while but one by one we're going to go around this country, and that's the point, Bob. This is not... No, no, you know, modern politics now is left and right. You know, you've got all the workers going, no, you fucking left ring, poofed her inner city greenies, you're fucking taking yeah. away our work, right? Yeah. And then you've got all, the, all those left wing greenie inner city poofters going, fuck you workers, you're just sucking on the big boss's cock so you can get a job right, and you're just being fucking racist and fucking, you know, latent greedy people who want to become rich. We've got to unite those two people out because the people at the very top don't pay tax, right? You know, the Googles, the Facebooks and all that, they don't pay tax, right? And the people at the bottom, the welfare people, they don't pay tax either. And you've got this group in the middle, right? And they're split between left and right. And, and as long as those two are fighting each other, we're going to have an inefficient political system which cashes in on it. They don't give a fuck whether, whether Keating, fucking Howard, Rudd, Gillard, Abbott short and get in right as long as one of them in because they're fucking sucking off the same financial system right yeah. and we're moving towards a cashless society right yeah. and once society is cashless money money is not real it's just a concept it's abundance and scarcity is purely a mental concept which we share there's no it's an airy fairy not based in reality concept money we've got to be motivated by something else and rather than going we haven't got enough money we've just got to go how do we want to live and we want to live a free life where we've got access to free energy from solar energy like Ningen, power all these cities so it's not on the grid coming from cities and coal and all that. We've got an abundance of sunshine, relax all the food laws and then create a culture in Australia where we green Australia and then it's a food bowl for that we've got 
too much food, we export it. And then if another country looks at us and goes, fuck, we're going to invade them, right? That we go, well, fucking why invade us? We've greened the desert. We, we've greened an area which is more fucked up than you. We can teach you how to do this. And then we export this food thing to the world where everyone is self-sufficient locally, right? And you do not need to go to war. We cut off all war and welfare because there's no need for war and welfare. Well, hey? Don't all want to come over here and enjoy our greenness. Well, fucking, we're going to need some hands. We're going to need some people who... Really we're going to meet... Work, so yeah, yeah, we're going to need some people who put their fucking... Um, hands in the in the earth and get dirty because at the moment we've got boat people coming over right they're going to these detention centers and we spoke to a local guy here who's whose brother runs a detention center right he gets 200 bucks per day per person and since he's been doing that he's he owns a Learjet and he go, he's going to the state of origin and and you know when an Indonesian president said fuck there's going to be a tsunami of boat people come over he went fucking great I'll be able to buy more Learjets so instead of complaining about all oh, these people getting free money it all goes back to the rich people anyway and those people don't go oh you know what I'm going to put that money into 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 building something inspiring it's all being warehoused in, in it, all that system has got to go that money system has got to go and we're going to go for something that inspires us and and what we're going to do is your point is exactly the point right of there's a fear of welfare too much welfare and also too much war we're going to be invaded but if we if people look at this country it's a it's a big point and it's greened and we've greened the desert we go well fucking you green everywhere else and if the whole world this is we're going to export to this world it's going to be bigger than the hill's hoist we export a decent because countries all around the world are go, getting urbanized right and disconnected from the land yeah. if we connect humanity back to the earth right the original food source we don't need to go to war and we do not need welfare and we've got abundance and if people are physically working and they're eating better food right the the health costs are going to go down right and um uh all the, we're not going to rely on uh, fossil fuel because base load will go down. Base load has been artificially increased so that uh, you can say that renewable energy isn't viable. But the key thing is with the renewable energy and efficient use of land and not inefficiently transporting everything, base load goes down to a minimum, right? And we start using our resources smartly. And that's what it's going to be all about. Yep. All right. I'll vote for... What's his name again? Gary the Goat. Gary the Goat. <laughs> okay. Bob, thanks for your time, man. <laughs> Come in. And that's what we're doing. We're going around the country <laughs> fucking one by one, and we're fucking going to green Australia. And Gary, he's going to sort these cunts out. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you live in the world, man. This is a universal thing. This is not a country thing. It's not a religion thing. It's just something where it's time humanity moved beyond money, which does not exist, people. It has got no physical manifestation. Anyway, but the thing about money, Bob, is I just, it, it, if you don't believe in it, right, yeah. you don't pay for stuff, you don't pay taxes, well, you don't, just pay something. yeah, if you, don't, if you don't pay for it, what happens is the law comes down on you and you get sent to jail. And then if you're a real troublemaker, they'll put you in a cell with a guy who's going to fuck you. And when you've got a cock up your ass, that'll be fucking real, eh? Yeah. All I can say is <laughs> fuck them before they fuck us all. Let's do it. CYO Corner in the 1890s pumped water. Yeah, pumped water from Perth to Kalgoorlie, opened up the gold. Cool, yeah, yeah, the mother, that's just outside um, Kalgoorlie. And that was the last gold rush in the world, right? And that opened up so much. For, and he got hammered. He actually committed suicide because he got so much shit from it because they said it wouldn't work. He was telling us who the Premier was. Yeah, Forrest. Yeah. Yep. It was the explorer. Now, was Alan Jones four pumping water into the middle yeah. of Australia? Yeah. Yeah. No, he he was he came over to Brewery. Yeah. Because of the, the drought thing and all that, and he was really pushing uh, that barrow. He was saying like, it probably doesn't make five percent or ten percent return on investment. But he said that's a hundred and twenty years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and it's still being used. And but it's pumping more water now than ever. And he said, if we brought the water down from Lake Argyle and the order... Oh, the mate, we could thing, green the whole of Australia if we well, got our shit together. Here, he says, like, you can bring the water from there down this way. Yeah. And also from the 
uh, northern rivers in New South Wales yeah. into the inland. But is it, and you know, like it wouldn't matter it, if it cost three hundred billion. Well, you just print money. You don't money. Years time, yeah, it'll still be bring a water. Yeah, but. Was he saying that are the country people for that idea? Is that an idea yeah. that's yeah. yeah? So Alan Jones comes out and says that, but he's got power to say that to politicians as well. What I think the reason it's not being done right, it's such an obvious idea, right? It's it, but the reason it's not been done because it'll decentralise power. There's a resistance from the people who own the system to to do it. But where's where's the resistance? It's not from the people, right? No. It's not from the shock jocks no, on no. the left and the right. So where's it from? Where's the resistance from? Uh, well, it's probably more political. I mean, you've got to have better roads in Sydney so we can go to the mall. Yeah. Back home again so you think it's it's not an idea that grips city people? No, it doesn't grip. Them. Yeah. No. It's how long it takes you to get to the mall. Yeah. Or to your yeah. Mind-numbing well, job at your insurance company or your bank. Yeah, yeah, that's more important. Get home. Yeah. Well, if you've got a mind-numbing job in insurance, you fucking, we're going to fucking get rid of that, yeah. right? And you're going to get out there and do something more useful and more fun and more fucking invigorating. You're going to fucking get out to the country and we'll sort this shit out, Bob. Tell them, mate. Number one. <laughs> Boat goat. Many, many years ago, Yeah. I used to work at the abattoirs and I, I always felt a little bit out, but... Suddenly they gave me a nickname. And what was that? And the nickname was Spanner. And why did they call you Spanner? And I was very impressed. I was initiated. I was a part of the team. And one day I asked what Spanner meant. And they said, every time you walk by, you tighten our nuts. Oh, that's how good. How good was that? I didn't Jimbo? feel too. <laughs> that's fucking beautiful. But how did it all start? The Gary the Goat thing. Well, basically, I was going around the country. I did a gig here in 2004, right? So for 10 years, I was, I was doing gigs around the country, just doing dirty jokes and selling I Fucked a Goat t-shirts. And for years, people told me, they said, Jimbo, you're selling I Fucked a Goat t-shirt. Aside from it being wrong, that's the most uncommercial idea in the world. It's never going to lead anywhere. But eight years later, someone sold me a goat for a case of beer, right? because of that t-shirt i thought well fuck it i'll throw go to uh, gary in the car anyway three years later he's been offered to be flying around the country in lear jets and he's running for prime minister right so it's the moral of the story is you've got to follow your heart whatever it is no matter how crazy an idea is you've got to do it and you, you can't do it because of the outcome you just got to do it because you love it and if you love something that, that's more than fucking earning money because the, the end, bottom line is money doesn't exist. Well, but how, how much did you make out of your T-shirts? Oh, fuck all. But oh, fuck all. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, you know, put it this way, you know. That's half of it. You know, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't afford to go down to the brothel and root chicks as good looking as you, Spanner, <laughs> right? <laughs> I fucking just had to wank off into me fucking T-shirt all the way around the country, you know what I mean? I did it fucking tough, but hey... When I was doing me load, I was thinking about you, Spanner. You know what I mean? Me nuts were tight. And, you know, so basically, but I, what I did was I, I just rubbed my car off used vegetable oil from pubs, right? So it's free fuel, right? Slept in the back, you know, with swag, people's places, whatever. People put me up, free accommodation. And when I got really low, I, um, I grew my own food, sprouts. So I had a good vegetable load, right? Because I couldn't afford to be sick, right? And I walked everywhere, did exercise, made sure I didn't get sick. And then when I got really low, I got into urine therapy where I drink a cup of my own piss every morning. It's just got full of antibodies and all that, right? And the end result was I was fit, lean, and fucking healthy. Body had machine. fucking no money, right? Now Gary has fucking come along and I've got a bit of cash and I'm busy, you know what I mean? And I'm fucking, you know, I'm staying in a few places, spending a bit more money, fucking eating a bit more, fucking looking a bit more haggard, getting fatter, complaining about fucking I'm tired, I'm becoming like a normal human being, you know what I mean? So I'm becoming a bit successful, but part of me longs for those days where you could just fucking just live really simply. So my goal is to still keep going like this, but just to fucking... Live simply, you know what I mean? And you know, and when you have a wank and think of a girl like Spanner, that is as simple as it gets because when you wake up afterwards, after you've done your load, you don't have to talk to them. You know what I mean? You can just go straight to sleep, eh, mate? Whereas you, when you fuck Spanner, 
you're gonna fucking do all the pillow talk shit and all that, you know, fucking how are you? And then she's gotta, she's gotta go, well, fuck it, you, you go fucking what's your name? And you go, for fuck's sake, you've been rooting me for 40 years, and that's when you go, fuck, I'm rooting a guy with Alzheimer's, you know? But hey, hey, at least he can still get it up, hey? You know, as long as he doesn't talk, you know, fucking, as long as the old fella can get it up, mate, you're still of use no matter how far the brain's gone, you know what I mean? And that's what Spanner loves, right? She doesn't love. She doesn't only love the nuts tight, but she fucking loves the the fucking tools hard. And fucking Bob, remember, mate. What are we gonna do next election? I'll just test how fucking big your Alzheimer's in next election. What? Who are you gonna vote? One Gary. All right, hey, hey. I t- you know what that shit I was talking about Alzheimer's. I fucking take that back, mate. And Bob, well done, mate. You are. You are. Have you had this mother obsession? Mother obsession, mate. Obsession. Motherfucker obsession. Uh, yeah. Grandmother. Grandmother. You know what you are, Spanner? You're a gilf. You're a you're a grandmother I'd love to fuck. Uh, and Bob, you are a fucking lucky bloke, mate. You have been hot. You have been throwing it up the hottest chicken Burke. She is so hot. Now when she dies, you'd you'd dig her up and root her. She'd still she'd still be value, hey. Bob the cop would come down and you'd go, what's going on here? And you'd just be going, there's two stiffies in the graveyard now. You know what has brought you to the diggers? What? This is actually the Masonic Lodge. Yeah, well... The goat riders. Fuck it, mate. Mate, mate this, is what, this is why Gary's here. The amount of bestiality that's happened in this room, yeah, yeah, you know... Yeah, no. yeah, bestiality. You know, that's the thing about the, the Masonic Lodge, you know. You could have... The bestiality so- if the goat does it to you? That you've got to pay extra for that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the Masonic Lodge, I mean, they're pretty fucked up. I mean, they're the type of blokes who, you know, like, there'd be a goat in the room and Spanner in the room and they'd want to root the goat, you know what I mean? Yeah? That's fucking sick, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, fucking hell. Yeah, you just, you just go, mate. Right. I mean, you know, I'd fuck a goat, but when Spanner's in the room, mate, you just go, I'd, 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 you just go, no, nah, I'm going back to the two-legged variety. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Look at, look at. Yeah. Bob's going out for a pool. Yeah. Right? No, you're not staying here. No, I'm not staying here. Then I don't stay here. You're out of here. You're out of here. Things keep. I'm up the prime minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>